I was probably closer to him than any other president. Uh, I think when the history is written of this generation, <coughs> he will be a much bigger figure than he is today. Uh, I think the programs that Jack Kennedy had introduced that were not getting any place in Congress were all put through by one guy, and that was Lyndon Johnson. Uh, very powerful man. I got a call from Walter Jenkins, who was Johnson's right arm, asking me, said the boss would appreciate it if you could come down and help out after the assassination, and I did. And for two or three days, I was living practically in the White House. And I know that one night, at the end of that three or four days, uh, I was staying at the Mayflower. He called me and he said, uh, come out to the house and have dinner. Because he was living out in Pearl Mistress' house. Uh, as vice president, there wasn't any place where the vice president lived, except as they found their own quarters. And so he said, come on out and have dinner with Bird and me. And I went out the side, I said I'd meet him on the side door of the Mayflower. And I went out, there was a 16th Street, I don't remember what it is. Anyway, I went outside. And this squad of motorcycles came zooming up. And then this big limousine came up and the back door opened up. Johnson stuck his head out and said, come on get in here or something like that. I got in and, <coughs> and he said, none of your goddamn debates. <laughs> yeah, he was very, he was very negative on that. That was the first thing he said to me. He had said other things to me over the, at the White House, but I mean that night, <coughs> that's what he, he greeted me with. We went out to his house and had dinner we were joined by Bob McNamara, uh, two or three others, and uh, I'd say I was pretty close to him. He certainly <clears throat> tried to get me to come down and <coughs> work for him. Uh, I had a hand in advising him on some of his, before he was president, on some of his station acquisitions when his first daughter got married. It was a White House wedding, and it was a Saturday afternoon, 5 o'clock, I think. And obviously Ruth and I were going down for it, and he called me in the morning and said, uh, I want you to take care of the kids tonight. And I said, what do you mean? He said, they're going to try to get away from the press and I want, them to, want you to take care of them at your house. And uh, I said, well, let me see what I can do. And he said, well, <coughs> I'll get a signal to you during the ceremony. Somebody will get a message to you about where they'll meet you and you take them to New York. He wanted to know if I was coming down the company plane. And I told him, he said, okay, we'll take him back to New York in the company plane and you take him to your house. And I said to myself, my God, what am I going to do with the Secret <laughs> Service and everything else? And if I tell Ruth, she'll leave. <laughs> but <clears throat> during the course of the wedding ceremonies and so forth, I think it was Walter Jenkins came up behind me and said, uh, the plan has been changed. The kids are going to someplace else to hide out. And I think they went to not Bermuda, but someplace to get away from the press. <coughs> but that's how close we were that he would trust me with that kind of an assignment. It was no bargain from my point of view, but it, it did indicate that you know, we were pretty close. 